career touchdown number 29, thus becoming Kansas' all-time leader. They lead 7-0. Wrap things up for us, Dave and Todd in Tuscaloosa. John Williams has running room. And a first down across the 35-yard line. John Williams, a redshirt freshman, gets the first down. Maurice Gaddy, the strong safety, made the tackle. Kansas scored on its first series a 10-play, 60-yard drive that took three minutes and 50 seconds. And on the touchdown, June Henley scored his 29th career TD, and that set the all-time Jayhawk record. TCU didn't show much in its first series, but now on third and long, they get the first down on the run by John Williams. It's first and 10, TCU at their own 35. Straight up the gut, Hoy Woods, and there is a fumble on the play, and Kansas has the ball. Well, Charlie, that play looked like it had problems right from the start with the exchange. I'm not sure that Dover ever got the ball in there cleanly to his running back, Mitchell. TC, you try to say they've got the ball, but not so. Well, it's Woods. Let's look at the beginning here. Nope, he never got the ball in there cleanly. Woods dropped the ball. I, I can't tell if that was the, the fault of Dover or Woods, but they just didn't get it together right off the bat. So Kansas now on the turnover with a 7 and nothing lead, first and 10 at the TCU 38-yard line. Henley, the single setback, and he picked up about five to the 34-yard line. Jeff Stevens, linebacker, made the tackle. Last year, Kansas rushed for 364 yards against TCU, and they're beginning to show strength on the ground already. Well, that's right, as you look at uh, John's numbers, but in that first drive, they threw the ball very effectively, and now they're coming back with the running game. On second and five. Overthrowing Andre Carter. Let's take now a look at the Kansas offense. The running back you'll be watching all night is June Henley, who became the all-time touchdown maker for the Jayhawks. Rush for 187 yards and three touchdowns in the opener against Ball State. The wideout watch for Isaac Bird, 6'2", 180 pounds, great hands, breakaway speed, offensive line averaging over 300 pounds. Cleve Roberts at right guard. Third down and six. TCU already with their backs against the proverbial wall. Johnner's pass is underthrown, and he got nailed by Scott Taft. Oh, nailed may be an understatement. I mean, Taft hit him about as hard as you can hit a player on the football field. I mean, watch John at the end of this play. He's going to have his momentum going this way, and he's going to get sent back the other way. Oh, he took a big hit from Taft, just wiped him off the screen there. And we are going to see a long field goal try of 51 yards by Jeff McCord. And the ball rolls dead at the nine-yard line. We are going to take a break. TCU dodges the bullet. Still trailing, however, seven to nothing. In a tough case of athletes, foot and you're bent. You get that it to Fort Worth, Texas, Damon Carter Stadium. Charlie Steiner, along with Rodney Gilmore, coming into the game. Big question was, could TCU stop the running game? Kansas last year gave up 364 yards in a 38-20 loss. Yeah, well, you know, they focused on that, and Kansas expected that, and they threw the ball quite a bit on that first drive. And they came back with the run the second drive, so that's still a big question for us, Charlie. That was Jason Tucker, a pickup of nine yards on the play. Very close to a first down. Charlie, all week long, TCU talked about how they have an improved, bigger defense, and they need to stop the run. And what did Kansas come out and do? Well, they threw the ball. They said, we read the papers, too. 
Jeff Dover had a terrific week in his first game as the TCU starting quarterback, leading the upset in Norman 27. And so there is hope springing eternal this fall here at TCU. Dover, a red shirt freshman. From the I formation on first and 10 at the 44 yard line. Basil Mitchell. Inside the 40 and a flag. The flag came in late. A pickup of 24. And he did a lot of that on his own because Kansas got great penetration at the point of attack as we look at a face mask call there. It's probably going to be unintentional and tacked on. So you know, Charlie, watch the end of the play. You'll see right there, Blevins jumps on the back of Mitchell and grabs the face mask very clearly. And that's your penalty. That looks pretty blatant. Man, number 28 on the defense. First down. Let's take a look at the TCU offense, Basil Mitchell, who picked up 14 on his very first carry this evening. Jason Tucker, the wideout with John Washington hobbled. He's going to get a lot of work tonight. The offensive line, keep an eye on the center. 290-pound Ryan Tucker. They think he's All-America quality here. First and 10 for Kansas. at the 34 of the Jayhawks. Mitchell and Woods in the backfield. And here's Mitchell to the 30-yard line. Pickup of about five. Dewey Houston. Now the Kansas defense. Look for Kevin Copp to do an awful lot of work tonight. He came into Kansas as a 220-pound linebacker with a 15-and-a-half-inch neck as a freshman. He's now 270 with an 18-and-a-half-inch neck. Ronnie Ward was missing all of last year with the shoulder. So, too, was Tony Blevins. Ward and Blevins are considered the two best defenders on Glenn Mason's squad. Second and five at the 30. Dover with time. Overthrows Tavares Moore at the 20. Gaddy is in on the play. The strong safety. Well, Gaddy wasn't the only one. There are a whole lot of people around there. And Dover threw that ball and probably should not have. So it's third down and five. Maurice Gaddy led Kansas last year with 93 tackles and two picks. Third and five at the 30. Screen pass. The ball is loose. It's picked up by Kansas. Patrick Brown made a tremendous interception there, Charlie. That was an unbelievable play. Kansas was looking for a screen pass. They saw lots of screens last year in this ball game, so they looked for it this week. Patrick Brown plays like a spy. He just sticks around the line of scrimmage to see what happens, and he reads it very well. Take a look. Middle of the right side of your screen, left side of the screen. You'll see 47 is just standing around looking for 22 Mitchell. He's there. He's going to come cover him. The ball's up in the air, and he gets his hands on it. Great presence by Brown to be right there. So Kansas, with its second turnover of the night, the recipient of a second turnover, they've got a 7 and nothing lead. A fake to Henley, the pass to Jim Moore, the tight end. And that's enough for a first down, a pickup of 16 yards on the play. Chris Staten made the tackle. So we expected Kansas to be rather conservative and churn it out piece by piece. Instead, Glenn Mason has opened it up early. Well, they're following the golden rule. You know, golden pat rule is the offensive coordinator. And he has decided that what he's going to do is take what they give him. They said they're going to stop the run, so he's throwing the ball on first down. A couple of flankers to the top of the screen. Bird down to the bottom, handoff Henley. Henley cuts at the 50 and cut down at the 48-yard line. Mike Adamley. Well, Charlie, at Cajun Field in Louisiana, Texas A&M sleepwalking against the Ragin' Cajuns until Don DeAndre Hardeman finally wakes the Aggies up with this 39-yard touchdown run. He fumbles, recovers, but they still trail 21-13. It's at the half. Guys? So Kansas sitting pretty. 3.24 to go, first quarter. At the 
48-yard line of TCU. A little shuttle pass to Henley. And he's lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe picking up a couple. Jay Deverne, the outside linebacker who missed all of last year with a knee, makes the tackle. Well, one of the improvements for TCU is the ability to handle things on the end. You don't usually see this Kansas play, this shovel pass, but they run it there. But on the outside, 91, 51 in zone play pass, and 43, Deverne. Great outside play this year by TCU. Scott Taft is somebody you want to keep your eye on tonight. He is a mover and a shaker. Third and four. Quick pass over the middle. It is caught. Pass is complete to Sean McDermott. To Sean McDermott, and that is good for a first down. A little quick slant pass. Pickup of 11. Well, he reads this very well, John, or does. Inside is free. No coverage right off the bat, and so he just runs a quick post pattern, quick step. Nicely thrown ball. Had a nice throwing lane there. Correction, the pass was caught by number 25, Eric Van, out of the backfield. And that's a first down for Matt Johnner, who has completed early 70% of his passes. Henley, the single setback. Henley picks up about five. Yeah, Charlie, a moment ago, we talked about TCU and their outside, their ends, and what a good job they do of keeping things in. That time, they kept Henley inside, and that was largely because of the play of Matt Harper on the outside, forcing Henley to cut back inside. And so a second down and about four yards to go. That's nearly the 30-yard line. So Henley gets a breather, and Eric Van is now on the backfield. Johnner is sacked back at the 35-yard line by Galen Hyder, the 6'5", 285-pound senior. He's playing on a shaky knee, but he shows no ill effects on that play. Well, you know, you talk about experienced quarterback and inexperienced quarterback. In this area of the field, you've got to know when the blitz is coming and get rid of the football so it doesn't take you out of field goal range. That time, Johnner didn't pick it up right away. And so on third down and about 10, at the TCU 35-yard line. From the shotgun. Johnner, the junior left-hander, throwing on the run. Ball is tipped incomplete. Nearly caught by Eric Van. It will be fourth down. And so the Horn Frogs defense holds. Uh, Johnner seems just a little bit rattled by the last couple of plays. I think he realizes that he didn't have a good play when he got sacked, and he tried to make a little something happen there and almost threw an interception on that play. Threw right into coverage, and now he's back on for a very long field goal. He'll hold the ball. Matt Johnner to hold for Jeff McCord. A 52-yard try. The last attempt from 51 was blocked. This one is on its way. It is up, and it is no good. So TCU dodges another bullet, but Kansas still leads by seven. Who wants a front row ticket to the greatest movies ever? I'll take one. Choice one from Continental Cable Vision is a package of five premium movie channels. HBO, HBO2, Cinemax, Stars and Encore. Wow. All for just $18.50 a month. Golly. Call today. I want one. Get a free upgrade and a 30-day money-back guarantee. That's the one for me. Choice one from Continental Cable Vision. It's one great movie choice after another. Terrific! Your sister said the Accord is the number one retail selling car in America. I'm going to wait, you said. Your uncle said three Accord models were each named a best overall value in their class. I'm in no rush, you said. Then you made your move. The Honda 96 clearance. Your mother said, he's definitely got my brains. Timing is everything at your Honda dealer. Future broadcasters, Joe McGinty plays the voice of NFL films through mom's pregnant stomach. 
Growing up, there is a recording in every room. The mountainous size of an onrushing defender. The splintering force of a far-arm shiver. One ton of muscle with a In later years, McGinty mind. complains he hears the, the voice even when the tape recorder is turned off. It of convinces him to travel to South Bend in a bid to become the fifth the horseman at Notre Dame. ESPN 2's presentation of college football is brought to you by Connectin. If you want a medicine that acts tough, get tough acting Connectin. Well, let's see what the Horn Frogs can do on their fourth possession. They have been held scoreless with 56 seconds to go in the first quarter. Kansas 7 to nothing. TCU with the ball at their own 35-yard line. Jeff Dover, the red-shirted quarterback, red-shirt freshman quarterback. Did with remarkable composure. Lance Williams and John Williams are split in the backfield. Dover with a lot of time throwing. Incomplete. Intended for Mike Brown, the second string tight end. I'll tell you, Ward was all over that play. You know, we've seen Ward make a nice tackle on a running play. Watch him here just hang around the middle and play real good pass coverage. He's right all over the tight end, stays right in there, gets that arm around. What a great play. Ronnie Ward, they talk about him as a potential Butkus Award candidate. He's a senior who missed all of last year with a shoulder. Second and 10 at the 35. <laughs> Right up the gut, that's John Williams again, and Williams across the 40 to the 41. Tony Blevins, who missed all of last year with a knee, came up from his free safety position to make the tackle. Now, Blevins is a player. I mean, this is a guy who played cornerback early on in his career, was really great out there in man-to-man -man coverage, but they have so much talent in their secondary, they moved him inside to get more players with talent on the field. So it is third down and about four yards to go. TCU is going to have to get to the Kansas or to their own 45-yard line. Clock is running. Time is running out on the first quarter. Out of the eye. This is Williams. He is gone. For the red shirt freshman, the biggest surprise is spring camp for Pat Sullivan and his TCU Horn Frogs, and they are right back in it. Well, they've been trying to find the guy who could step forward and take control of the running game for him. Mitchell got the ball early. Williams has now really stepped forward with that long run. Got great blocking at the point of attack, including a great block from his fullback. And scooted all the way. And Michael Reeder, who has never missed an extra point in his career. And he still has it. TCU ties it on the 59-yard touchdown run from scrimmage by John Williams. Well, watch the way Williams waits for his blocker. He gets a nice block out there by Lance Williams that really springs him into the clear and he did a nice job of waiting for that block and then just turns on the jet and secondary for Kansas is pretty fast and that's fast enough for Williams and he is met by the Texas Rangers John Williams three carries 78 yards and the game tying touchdown and the 59 yard touchdown run TCU, which would dearly love to have a big star on his offensive unit, may have just found themselves one. The red shirt freshman, John Williams. Well, it's been running back by committee for that man, Pat Sullivan, and he has been desperately waiting for someone to make a play like that, and Williams has given it to him. And Charlie, if Williams can run the ball like that, Kansas is in a whole lot of trouble. And now you're going to see Michael Reeder kick off. Michael Reeder is some kind of story. In his college career, he has never missed a field goal from less than 39 yards. And he can boot him deep into the end zone. But he is kicking into a wind. 
Van and Hindley are standing back awaiting the kick of Michael Reeder. That's a squibber. Picked up by Eric Van. Knocked out of bounds at the 35-yard line. A return of 23. Next Saturday, ESPN is the place to be for college football. At half past 12 Eastern, Pittsburgh looks to change fortunes as they battle number eight Ohio State. And then at 7.30 Eastern, it's an SEC battle. Number 20, LSU heading to number 15, Auburn. It all begins on College Game Day. And scoreboard updates from residents in throughout the day. Hey, how about Lee Corso today? He picked one right, huh? Got Michigan. He nailed it. Yeah. Michigan upsetting Colorado. June Henley and Eric Galbraith in the I formation. Here's Henley. Turning the corner. And Henley's got running room down the sideline. Cutting at the 35 and down at the 23. Well, that's the way you draw it up on the blackboard. You're not supposed to have a running back if you're a defensive man. You don't want a running back running 30 yards before anybody shows up anywhere near him. Look at the great blocking up front. Great block by the tight end. Good kick out block there. Now Henley gets in behind it. No purple shirts anywhere to make any contact until he's gone about 25 yards. Chris Staten huffing and puffing and making the tackle to end the first quarter. We've got ourselves a good one, don't we? 7-7. Seven, seven as we begin the second quarter in just a moment. Hey, having a little trouble packing on pounds, sports, or to even be noticed? You could cram down all this, loaded with fat and cholesterol, or you could drink a glass of fish and pack on quality pounds. It's General Nutrition's Pro Performance 2200 Weight Gain, 2200 pound packing calories a serving. Fortified with guarana, OKG, creatine, and royal jelly. Beef up your bones with GNC's Pro Performance 2200 Ooh. weight gain. Get noticed. Get big. Get a life. Only at GNC. This here freight train. Hey, Pablo. Me, I'm Motif. There's only one drink fat enough to quench our thirst, and that's turbo sweet. God damn you. The can's upside down. Uh, don't talk to me like a child. I I played Hamlet at Cambridge! Once again, you've ruined my concentration. Excuse me, excuse me, what, what's my motivation? You're all right, when you're thirsty, trust your gut. It's not some actor. That's it, I am going to my trailer. Only from Domino's, our newest crust sensation, new Roma herb, tangy sun-dried tomatoes, slow-roasted garlic, and fresh basil baked into our classic hand-tossed dough. Then, crunchy Parmesan topping all around the edge. Wow. New Roma herb crust, only for a limited time. Call now and get a Roma herb crust or any large one-topping pizza for $9.99. Any second one-topping pizza, just $4.99. Wow, call Domino's. to introduce the new more responsive Volvo 850 GLT. Drive safely. Carbon monoxide isn't the only thing to worry about coming from your tailpipe because with every stroke of your engine, motor oil is being vaporized into exhaust, leaving less and less protection. That's why there's Castrol GTX 10W30. Of every leading 10W30, Castrol provides the most protection against volatility burn-off. So use Castrol, or watch more of your protection go up in smoke. Castrol GTX, the most protection against volatility burn-off. We have had a very entertaining first quarter of play here at Eamon Carter Stadium. And June Henley last year carried the ball 13 times for 160 yards and two touchdowns. So far tonight, he has carried the ball nine times for 71 yards and one touchdown. So he's already on pace to surpass what he did last year. First play, second quarter. This is Henley. And now, Mike Adamley, what's going on? Well, Charlie and Rod in Columbia, South Carolina, the Georgia Bulldogs clawing their way back into things here. Mike Bobo rolling to his right, finding Juan Daniels. It is now 16-14, South Carolina. 
And here it's 7-7. Early in the second quarter, Kansas has the ball. Second down and nine at the TCU 23. Boy, Henley is a workhorse too, isn't he? Right up the middle. Down to about the 11-yard line. Barry Browning, the free safety, made the tackle. Well, he got a great block from Jared Smith, the center, number 65. Watch what he does here. Takes on one guy, gets up in there and blocks off the linebacker. That's why there's a huge hole there. And Henley, no dummy, goes right behind it. So June Henley may be one of the best, I was going to say, unknown running backs in the country. But certainly when you list the great running backs, he may not necessarily leap among the top three or four, but he's playing like it tonight, isn't he? Here he goes again. <laughs> Inside the five. Barry Browning again makes the touchdown saving tackle. Oh, you talk about a guy who knows and has vision. He sees things well. He's going to follow a nice pulling block here. Cuts back and goes sideways. But you know, change in direction like that, moving that way. He's 215 pounds. He looks like a little scat back. Meanwhile, Browning, the 5'9", 190-pound free safety, saves the touchdown. And we're going to have ourselves a measurement. Don't you like that, Henley? Man. Oh. I tell you, you know, he had some long runs against TCU last year. A couple of runs, one 43, the other one 59. So he gets a track workout against TCU. It is first and goal for KU. Now let's take a look at what happened in the first quarter, statistically speaking. TCU had the bulk of the running yards, and Kansas had the passing yards. But those two turnovers hurt TCU. First and goal. Henley to the three. Chris Staten and Chance McCarthy came up on the tackle. You know, talking to Glenn Mason yesterday about his squad, he knew full well that TCU was going to focus on cutting down their running game. And he had that sly smile like, okay, I know you, you say you're going to do it. Show me. You want to stop our guys? Okay, just don't talk about it. Bring your bigger, stronger guys on. Let's see who can stop it. Early in the first quarter, Mason came out having his quarterback, John Earth, throwing. But now the running game is taking hold. From the I formation, the up back is Galdrick. Here's the pitch out to Henley, and he's going to score. Well, when you see a running back with his fullback lead him into the end zone, totally untouched like that, you know the tight end did a great job of hooking on the end there. No pursuit at all. Watch the block of Moore on the right side of your screen. You'll see there'll be no pursuit. He turned everybody inside. There was a great block by Moore right there. And that is enough to give enough time to get him into the end zone. And now Jeff McCord for the extra point. 14-7, Kansas. We have ourselves a ball game, don't we? Glenn Mason likes the way things are going in the early going. So you say you want a revolution? Then come together at Best Buy. Well, right now you'll find the Beatles anthology on home video. You get eight videos packed with live concerts, interviews, never-before-seen footage, and more. It's their music, their story, as told by the Beatles themselves, all for just $109.99. For a limited time, exclusively at Best Buy, purchase the Beatles Anthology home video and receive a free Beatles Anthology sweatshirt. The Beatles are gear at Best Buy. What's got Dion acting so sweet? Oh, I'm sorry. Are you trying to catch this? It's got to be Honey Frosted Wheaties, the frosted flake that's kicked with Wheaties energy for a prime time taste. Can I get anyone a beverage? Honey Frosted Wheaties, it's sweet energy. There's this college team I practice with to stay in shape. Each one is out to prove that they can hit the Rhine Express. I'm out to prove they can't. Right there. After a day of fastballs, it's Advil for me. Nothing has shown me that it works better or lasts longer than Advil. For sore muscles, more doctors recommend Advil than any other pain reliever. I love that sound. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. You have one minute to decide the rest of your life. In two weeks, I'm going to have to pull the trigger. We dare you to spend... Time's up. Two days in the valley. <laughs> Rated R. Starts September 27th. ESPN2's presentation of college football is brought to you by Best Buy. 
just the store you've been shopping for. 14-7, Kansas over TCU here at Amon Carter Stadium in Fort Worth, Texas on a muggy Saturday night. And this night has belonged in the early going to June Henley. That man has carried the ball 14 times for 95 yards and two touchdowns. He's been the player of the game so far. The last drive, 66 yards, six plays, all of them by Henley. He has two touchdowns tonight both of them it is june henley night well, he's gonna get tired he? doesn't look that way does he <laughs> he hasn't run for a thousand yards tonight yet <laughs> reggie hunt is standing deep as the kickoff comes his way it's gonna go out of bounds a penalty flag to kick out of bounds at the seven yard line and so TCU will take over at their own 35-yard line. Pat Sullivan with his redshirt freshman quarterback, Jeff Dover. Last week, Dover was 12 of 19 for 176 yards, but of his 12 completions, seven of them went to running backs on short routes or screens. Threw downfield only twice, and one of them was for 55 yards to the flanker Jason Tucker. And Tucker is now flanked way to the bottom of your screen and out of your picture. From the I formation, Woods and Williams is the deep back. John Williams, and what a start he's had for the Horn Frog. Now here's Williams. Thought he had a hole, was lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Couldn't do it. Ronnie Ward, the linebacker we told you about at the top of the broadcast, made the tackle. Well, Williams is lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Because Woods, his running mate in the backfield, did a great job of blocking and preventing a loss. Took on the blitz and let his buddy get back to the line of scrimmage. No gain, second and ten. And again from the eye. Tucker and Washington, the flankers. Williams, to the 37 or 38. Jason Thorne made the tackle. Thorne makes the tackle. He's a running mate of Ward. Watch number 46 in your screen how he just is always around the ball, takes on the blocker Woods and gets in on the tackle, stuffs the play right there so his buddy Thorne can make the tackle. Ward is an outstanding linebacker, and he hated having to watch for the last year and a half. Made 11 solo tackles in the opener for Kansas against Ball State. Third and seven. The pass is complete to the 40-yard line to Jason Tucker. Well, Tucker does a nice job of going back for this ball. He sees the ball. Dover just puts it up a little bit short. And watch Tucker. He sees it. He jumps for it, makes a nice play. When the defensive back has his back turned and can't see it, the offensive player has an advantage. Jason Harris beaten on the play. It's first and 10 TCU at the Kansas 40-yard line. And we have ourselves a much more wide-open game than we had anticipated. Williams. Look at him scat about. To the 37, Maurice Gaddy, the safety, makes the tackle. You know, Dover is really sort of a surprise at quarterback for TCU. I think everyone expected that Fred Taylor, the junior college player of the year, was going to come in and take over the job here at quarterback. But Dover just outplayed everybody in the spring and in the fall, and they had no choice but to make him the guy. And he's also the kind of guy that Pat Sullivan now can build his program around over the next three-plus years. Second and seven, TCU at the Kansas 37. Williams now the single setback. Williams inside the 35. Patrick Brown, the outside linebacker, makes the tackle. Pat Sullivan has had a pretty good run of coaching quarterbacks. When he was at Auburn, he was the quarterback's coach. Remember Reggie Slack, Stan White's in the NFL now. Max Naki was one of the great quarterbacks here at TCU, but 
Of course, TCU has a great reputation for quarterbacks going back to the days of Tammy Ball. You know, Sullivan wasn't a bad quarterback himself at Auburn. Heisman Trophy winner in 1971. Third down and five. Dover. Incomplete intended for Tucker. A tough pass for Dover throwing across his body. Yeah, but a smart play again because he didn't have anybody open initially. He pulled the ball down, didn't take a sack, and that gives his team a chance to get three points. They have a great kicker. And he's on the field now. Michael Reeder. We told you about him a bit earlier. In his college career, he has never missed from less than 39 yards. However, this is from 52. In his career, he is 0 for 1 from 50 plus. Hash mark to the right. It's on its way. Got it. Well, that's why I tell you, if a quarterback can make a good play on third down to keep you in range, and you've got a great kicker, instead of punting the ball, you come away with something. And Reader hits this thing like he's got a driver in his hand, and he just knocks it straight through. That thing would have been good from another five yards. The TCU Hornbrocks also have the luxury of a snapper. Great snapper in Ashby Porter. They think he is just spectacular. He's never really made a bad snap in his career. Uh, that's a guy who can get a job on Sundays. You know, when you can do that, and there's some teams in California that play on Sundays that are looking for snappers. A lot of teams. <laughs> well, both of them anyway. I was going to say a lot. <laughs> yeah, you think he's getting a phone call Jeff from Mike? Good job, huh? They keep raving about this kid's composure. And he was able to make the plays, not making mistakes. That old cliche about playing within yourself. Yes, don't get too excited on TV. You know, he gets worked up about these things, but when he steps on the field, he does a nice job in the pressure situations of understanding where the limitations are. Don't try to throw a ball in there when your arm isn't strong enough. And there's June Henley waiting the kick for the McCord. Henley and Van, two starting running backs, are the kick returner. Here comes Reader's kick. High and caught in the end zone. June Henley, he has been the star of this game so far. And Glenn Mason just loves this kid. I just love uh, backs like June Henley. Uh, they're uh, blue collar workers. I mean, that doesn't say he doesn't have talent. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, he comes to practice every day to work. He shows up to every game to carry the ball, uh, no matter if the going is easy or the going is real tough. Uh, he'll block, he'll run hard. Uh, I think he's, uh, he's got a, a variety of talents. He's got the, the moves to dance around you, and he's got the strength and toughness to run right over you. And which one he's going to do, you never sure. And that's Henley just running right up the gut. He is over 100 yards already with 9 minutes and 50 seconds to go in the first half. A pickup of 11 more. Well, he's getting a little help up front, too. Jared Smith, again, with a tremendous block in the middle of that line for Kansas. And, you know, it's kind of surprising. Smith is a guy who should not be playing football. He has arthritis in his shoulder, and he was told, Charlie, by his doctor not to play. He overruled his doctor. First and 10, Kansas, at their own 32. Henley with the spin, able to turn the corner to the 38-yard line. What was it that uh, Glenn Mason just said? Uh, he can run over you, he can dance around you. Great running backs make guys miss. Watch right here, this play is dead. And look at him, Whoops. nothing but air there. He's dancing around guys, doing a good job. Barry Browning can't get there. Initially, ultimately has to have some help from his friend. Doesn't he ever get tired? <laughs> well, he's taking a drink now on the sideline on second down and about four yards to go. I bet you he's back in there in a player too. Eric Van is now the deep back. Eric Galbraith up front. John, our quarterback draw. First down. Across the 45, 
Cedric Allen made the tackle. That fooled TCU. And that fooled everybody. And that was a play, you know, you fake it to the right side after you've run the toss sweep all day long. And then when you fake it, nobody thinks about the quarterback. So Jono just ran around in by himself to pick up the first down. Well, June Henley leaving the driving to some of the other guys now. Van and Galbraith. It is Van, the single back, and Jonner is back to throw. Long over the middle for Isaac Bird. He couldn't hold on at the 15. Cedric Allen defends the play. Oh, boy, did he. I mean, he was step for step with Bird. Allen was all over him. Had a little bit of inside help by Browning underneath, but he's got to make this play by himself. The ball was on the target, and Allen does what every good DB must do. Don't give up at the end. Get your hand in there and get the ball out. The so second and ten, Cedric Allen. <laughs> Made 30 tackles last year and had one pick. And he has been solid tonight. Donner. Oh, that's nearly picked off by Corey Masters. Yeah, he, he never saw Corey Masters. That was a mistake. Corey Masters is playing a short zone. He had dropped back about six yards and just stood there. And Jonner never saw him because he was looking from his left to his right, and Masters just snuck back in. Almost picked it off. Third down and 10 at the 47. Interesting. Kansas 4 of 6 and third down conversion tonight. Their offense turned sluggish with Henley on the sideline. But Henley is back. And that is the offensive coordinator for the Kansas Jayhawks. Golden Pat Rule. We're going to take a timeout. Kansas 14-10. When sports cream, when legs are sore. When backs ache. When muscles hurt. Why sports cream? Rubbing it in brings fast pain relief. No medicine smell. Why sports cream? Because it works. Presenting a great leap forward in batteries. Introducing Duracell Power Check, the only battery with a fuel gauge, so you can see how much power it has. New Duracell Power Check, the world's most advanced battery. On her wedding day. They make a nice couple, don't they? No. She met the man of her dreams. Uh, not related to him, are you? Sam's my brother. <laughs> <laughs> now. The only thing missing from the honeymoon is the groom. Critics raise feeling Minnesota is wild and wonderful. It was my wife! From the producers of Pulp Fiction and Get Shorty. Ah! Feeling Minnesota. Rated R. Now playing. Firestone has developed a new tire technology so advanced they use it on Indy cars in the worst possible condition, the rain. And if it can handle 172 miles per hour wet, 55 is a piece of cake. Introducing the Firehawk SC50, made possible by Unity, our ultimate tire technology. And by a tread patterned after our original Firehawk Indy rain tire, the Firehawk SC50, for the rain, for the road. an arsenal of offensive firepower to meet Georgia's Bulldogs next Saturday at 5.30, only on ESPN2. With Kansas third down and 10 at their own 47-yard line, TCU called the timeout. And this is the sixth play of the Jayhawk drive. Johnner from the shotgun. Long over the middle behind the intended receiver. Hosea Friday. And so it will be fourth down. And Dean Royal is on to put it away. Royal is coming home. He's from nearby McKinney, Texas. Well, Jonner got a pat on the head from his offensive coordinator, Golden Pat Rule, because Jonner is a little bit rattled right now. During that break we had, they were telling him, you know, get it together over there, and he looked a little bit unnerved. And I know that he's concerned a little bit because he has a pretty good quarterback behind him as well. And that's the senior, Ben Roots. And Roots is coming back from two bad knees. But he is likely to see some action tonight. Here's the punt. Wobbly and short. 
but a good roll stopping dead just inside the 15 yard line you can see up to 100 great college football games not on tv in your area from espn game plan only 69 dollars for the season Call your cable operator or direct TV for ES. It's been a bad idea considering that he's run for a 59-yard touchdown. It's even the game earlier. But Basil Mitchell and Coy Woods are split in the backfield behind Dover. Overthrowing a wide open Tavares Moore at the 30-yard line. Oh, you said it, Charlie. He was wide open. Moore just runs a hook right in here. Watch him. He's going to come on down and square in. He's wide open. And watch the ball is just going to sail high. He's right there. Dover just knew it. Knew it. Ah. Can't get too excited. He's got to just be calm. And that's one of the few times you've seen him just get a little bit too worked up out there, Charlie. They didn't know much about John Williams when he came in for spring practice. They knew he could run. But he was a pleasant surprise. And what a surprise he's been tonight. He's the single setback. And there he goes, just for a couple. Now let's check in with Mike Adamley, Mike. Well, Charlie and Rod, Texas A&M trying to avoid an embarrassing 0-2 start against southwestern Louisiana. And quarterback, Aggie quarterback Brandon Stewart, the Tennessee transfer, does it on his own here. He was always a great runner at Tennessee, and now he's doing the same thing for Texas A&M, a 46-yard touchdown run that pulls the Aggies to within two, 21-19. Gentlemen? Still plenty of time left in that one. And the clock is running here as we head toward the first end of the first half. He looked a little bit like Steve Young on that run, huh? Dover's in a heap of trouble, and he's all the way down. Pass is incomplete. Jones makes uh, the play defensively. But Dover nearly got himself sacked. And okay, not a real good set for TCU. Three downs and out, two passes, and they lose field position on this. Kansas will get the ball back around the 40, 45-yard line with arrested June Henley. Isaac Bird standing deep. Royce Huffman is the punter with the bare foot. He's a backup quarterback if need be, and that's a beauty. Oh, that's a beauty. Sending Bird back to his own 34. And Bird did a great job just to get four yards in return. We're going to take a break. 14-10 Kansas. And Horn Frogs are down by four with seven and a half minutes to go in the first half. It's been a very entertaining football game. Plenty of running. June Henley has been the star of this game. 16 carries, 113 yards and two touchdowns. This is his 17th carry into TCU territory. Pick up of about seven. Well, he's getting a little bit of help because Cleve Roberts really did a great job that time of blocking up front for him. Henley got right in behind him. Look at his numbers. Look what he did last year against TCU. 160 yards and two touchdowns. And you know, how about tonight, huh? He's going to beat that 160 yards at this rate easily. Second and four. There's Henley again. Not this time. Joe, uh, Jeff Stevens, the linebacker, met him head on. Just shy of the first down, about a yard. Maybe we're going to get a, uh, a measurement here. Yeah, and they're really working Henley, a good thing, and they're riding him. Last week, they ran him 28 times. He's on a pace to do a lot more than that. But, you know, he didn't carry the ball an awful lot for them last year. He cut, carried the ball and caught the ball a lot. He's not a huge guy. You wonder if he can carry the workload of about 30, 35 carries a game, Charlie. He has already beaten in yardage all time Gail Sayers and John Riggins, two of the great Jayhawks. Third and less than one. Give it to Henley. It's going to be close. Looks like he probably has it. But if so, not by much. Well, TCU did a real fine job up front there. Really doing a nice job of pinching down in there and not giving Henley a lot of room. Mason, obviously, quite concerned, wants to pick up the first down here. But that TCU defense is really starting to focus in on the running game after having been pushed around a little bit by the passing game. Taft 
51, Stevens 7, the linebackers made the tackle. Who was that? I have no <laughs> idea what that was, but it is a first down. It used to be you just carried the sticks out there and measured, and this time they brought a third stick out there. With and then no measured, change. Yeah, and measured back. What is that thing? That's one of those new contraptions. I don't know. Look at that. It's like a street surveyor. <laughs> From the 46, first and 10. So what else is new? Here's Henley. Run out of bounds at the 42. 39 plays for Kansas tonight. More than half of them for June Henley. Charles Henley Jr. The June is short for Junior. Uh, 20 carries for Junior, 127 yards. He came in to tonight's game fourth in the country and rushing behind Kevin Falk of LSU and Byron Hansbart of Texas Tech and Kepra McGee of Mississippi State. So Henley's going to take a breather and Eric Galbraith, that is the uh, nephew of former NFL star Tony Galbraith in the backfield. The pass is complete to the tight end Jim Moore at the 33. Let's go to Mike Adamley, Mike. Well, Charlie and Ron, Illinois could be in a world of hurt if they lose tonight in Tucson against Arizona. The Wildcats take the early lead in the first quarter. Quarterback Keith Smith to Mike Metzler, the tight end, 7-0. Illinois could start the season at 0-3. Kansas and TCU are each 1-0 coming into this game. Kansas routing Ball State two weeks ago. And TCU upsetting Oklahoma at Norman last week. Kansas with 13 first downs tonight. Touchdown, Kansas, and that was Eric Galbraith. Well, they give Henley a rest, and Galbraith goes the distance. Well, and it was Galbraith, because he was stopped at the line of scrimmage. There was not a lot of room. That was just a little fullback counter. He just flipped right back over the guard center area, and he was knocked around, and he just kept his balance, and then showed you a little bit of speed and got into the end zone. That's 20 to 10. It's Eric Galbraith with his first touchdown of the season. The extra point makes it 21-10, Kansas, with five minutes and 22 seconds. Well, look at that. He's on the field for the PAT after scoring a touchdown. But, you know, check out this individual effort. You know, he's going to get right to the line of scrimmage, cuts in there. He's tackled right there. He's hit again, but he breaks three tackles, makes another guy miss, and then sprints into the end zone. I mean, you just don't ordinarily see that kind of stuff. 43, Jay Deverne had the tackle at the line of scrimmage and couldn't hold on. Yeah, watch the balance here. Watch how he keeps it up, and then Browning comes in, can't get him. Masters has a shot at him. He can't get him. Look at that. Well, that's some sloppy tackling, too. And it's some great running, too. You can't coach that. Eric Galbraith, 5'11", 205 pounds, a 21-year-old junior from Jefferson City, Missouri. In the offseason, he decided to run hurdles to improve his conditioning. It paid I, off. Yeah, it worked, didn't it? And it is beginning to rain a little bit here. There was an 80% chance of rain coming into the game. It's now 100%. So six plays, 56 yards, two minutes and seven seconds. Again on the ground, Kansas is beating TCU over the head with the running game. 33 yards and the touch by Eric Galbraith. Well, Charlie, that's a running play of 33 yards for a touchdown and one for 59 yards. Long runs are just killing TCU. So Reggie Hunt is awaiting the kick from Jeff McCord. A high beauty fielded by Mitchell. Gets across the 20 to the 22-yard line. Chance McCarty made the tackle. The X Games on the road. Athletes competing in various events from BMX to inline skating. If the X Games weren't enough for you, check out Destination Extreme on the Deuce. Well, TCU now finds itself in an 11-point hole with 
five minutes and 17 seconds to go in the first half. Mitchell with the nice return to the 23. He is the deep back behind Corey Woods in the I formation. Here is Mitchell. Some hard hitting as he gets to the 29. Tony Blevins and Brett McGraw team up on the tackle. Good running by Mitchell, but also a nice block by Mark Cortez. The guard out there, number 67, did a nice job of getting out there and giving Mitchell a little bit of room so he could squeeze through to pick up a little bit of yardage. Give you some idea of the, we have a down Kansas player. Where we are located, look at those. We are 42 stories in the air. This may be the highest press box in America. And it looks like 46 Ronnie Ward. This is where we are. Way up here. <laughs> Yeah, I know you were there concerned we are. earlier when, you know, we have birds flying underneath us. It's a little unnerving <laughs> if you are not an en one who enjoys heights to see birds fly below you. And the rain is coming down underneath us. <laughs> Man, it is high up here. Yeah, it is. Second and five at the 28-yard line. 4.52 to go first half. Mitchell and Woods in the backfield. That's Mitchell. He's got a first down and then some, and he nearly busted it to the 37-yard line. Jason Thorne made the tackle. What great blocking at the point of attack. Look at number 50, Ryan Tucker. Watch him. This is an All-American player. Look what he does. He just takes his guy out of the play, and Mitchell comes right in through that hole. Great blocking by Tucker, and also a pretty nice block by Coy Woods, number five, in the backfield. Tucker just buried his man. They think he is All-American caliber here at Fort Worth. He was all at WC last year, Southwest Conference. Late and great. Hand off. Mitchell gets back to the line of scrimmage and is really about all. Yeah, Tyrus Fontenot was right there. Fontenot got over there and made a nice play. Forced Mitchell inside and made the tackle himself. Watch Mitchell. is going to bounce it outside. Now Fontenot is going to show up. Plays off his block. Great job. When you get off blockers, you can make plays. Some players stay on blocks. They allow themselves to get out of the play. Fontenot didn't do that. Mitchell takes the rest. 37 yards on eight carries tonight for him. Dover, quick pass. It is complete, and it's fumbled. Picked up by Kansas. Down the sideline. <laughs> Jason Harris, number 23, with the fumble recovery. That well, was a nicely thrown ball by Dover, but it was a nice hit out here. Watch the end of the play. He's going to throw a nice ball out there. Good job right there. Travis Wilson makes a nice catch, but he takes a hit, and he just doesn't tuck the ball away. He doesn't take care of it, and Jason Harris is able to get there and pick it up. You take a look at the man from Fort Worth, Texas, coming home to do a little bit of starring in front of the family and friends. Third turnover of the night for TCU. Yeah, so you can dance when you have plays like that, you know. You can't dance if you don't do that kind of stuff. From the eye, first and 10 at the 29. Van gets back to the line of scrimmage, and really that's about all. Matt Harper made the tackle, big number 91. That's one of the few times we've called Matt Harper's name. And TCU was really big on Harper. He transferred here from Stanford, where he was a player for them, and, but he just got homesick and wanted to come home to Texas. The young man from McKinney is back here now and anchoring the outside of that line. We're expecting big things out of Harper and McCarty, the defensive ends here at TCU, and they haven't shown all that much tonight. Donner again on the quarterback draw. It'll end around to the 30 or to the 25-yard line, a pickup of about three. It'll be third and maybe seven. Well, Charlie, I think it's fair to say that uh, TCU has not stopped Kansas's running game. And we knew that if they didn't come close to doing that, their chances of achieving their goal of cracking into the top 25 with a win would not be very likely. This is just the fourth game all decade that Kansas is playing on real grass. They're one and two on grass and so far showing that they are not allergic to it. Van again. 
to the line of scrimmage, and that's about all. Well, I want to tell you one thing. Matt Harper got jobbed on that play. You know, he gets held on this play, and if he doesn't get held, he makes the play. Watch 91, Matt Harper. He's going to take on two guys here. He fights through, and he's got a chance to make the play. Look at the takedown. That's a hold. It's not called. They may pick up the first down. Matt Harper, <laughs> he's probably going to yell at the official. Why did you see that one? So it is fourth down and five, and the rain is really coming down now. On fourth and five, Kansas, with the 11-point lead, is going for it. Johnner throwing, completing to Isaac Bird, and I think he's got the first down at the 18-yard line. Needed to get to the 19. Chris Staten made the tackle. Well, quick safe pass to your best receiver, Bird. And Bird is a guy who knows something about hanging on to the ball, doesn't he, Charlie? Isaac Bird is not only a Jayhawk, he is a ball hawk. He guy. was an all-conference center fielder for the uh, Kansas Jayhawks baseball team. Hit 393 this spring and played rookie league baseball for the St. Louis Cardinals right after he was drafted. <laughs> Well, here goes Henley again. Inside the 15 to about the 12, and Kansas coming awfully close to blowing this game open with a little bit more than a minute to go in the half, and Glenn Mason has to be pleased with the way things are going. Here's Henley. Well, he's pleased with the way Henley is running. Look at this. Stutter step. See ya. I mean, if you can make guys miss, and not many people can, you make guys miss, you're a special kind of running back. 21 carries, 131 yards. John Johnner's going to throw for it into the end zone. He underthrows one receiver and overthrows another. And he had Friday out there. Hosea Friday was there in the end zone, and he just didn't get it to him. He had Friday on his mind. Not a bad idea. Not a bad song. What? <laughs> Friday on my mind? I guess we listen to different radio stations. Yes, we do. <laughs> The easy beats <laughs> from 25 years ago when you were just a toddler. Henley still on his feet to the three. Oh, you know, we may talk about this kid all night long. And, and truth, he is getting great blocking up front. But he is doing some great stuff on his own. Again, he's going to make a guy miss. He is dead to right. Right here, watch. There is the tackle. That should be a tackle, and there should be another tackle. But he is so elusive, he does a nice job of giving you a limp leg and picking up more yardage. Beat Chance McCarty down there at the five, and now it's first and goal at the three. Henley will score. Man. This is quite a performance for the 21-year-old senior. From Columbus, Ohio, June Henley. Well, they've been running that toss sweep all night long. They've been getting great blocking on the perimeter. That time, Jason Ilium, 37 for TCU, could not get off his blocker to try and turn the play inside. And here is McCord for the extra point. 28 to 10, 28 seconds to go in the first half. This has been June Henley night, deep in the heart of Texas, as the TCU Horn Frogs find themselves in a world of hurt. And the plane has been a big pain to TCU, and then, of course, so has June Henley. 23 rushes, 146 yards, three touchdowns, but it has been a beautiful night for the Jayhawks. Leading 28 to 10 with less than a half a minute to go. Well, Glenn Mason said he didn't really know what kind of a team he had. I think maybe he has a little indication that his offense can run the ball. Well, Henley has just had a magnificent first half. And that big offensive line for the Jayhawks has been opening holes, but there have been some sloppy tackles, too, on the part of the TCU Horn Frogs. A scribber falling dead at Hunt's feet at the 10. And Hunt is brought down in the 23-yard line, first and 10 to go. 
Mike Adamley is coming up at halftime with all the scores and highlights of a busy Saturday afternoon around college football. And it'll be interesting to see if Jeff Dover just kind of sits on it conservatively or if Pat Sullivan tries to launch one. Well, I think I would sit on it here. I would take uh, take it in at halftime here, 28-10. It's raining. Uh, you've had some trouble. I think I'd go in and just not let anything worse happen until I could get in at halftime and talk to my troops. And, of course, TCU has turned it over three times. First and ten. Mitchell, and that will probably be the last play of the first half. TCU doesn't seem to be in any great hurry to get back to the line of scrimmage. In fact, they are heading toward the locker room. June Henley, what a remarkable first half. As Pat Sullivan's team goes in trailing by 18. Kansas, 28. TCU, 10. It is a rainy night in Texas, but it's been a beautiful night for the Kansas Jayhawks. Time for halftime, and Mike Adamley. Mike? All right, thank you, Charlie. And coming up in just a few moments, we'll return to Boulder, Colorado for a postscript on that exciting Michigan win over number five Buffalo, or Buffalo, Colorado Buffaloes, I should say, plus other action from today's top 25 teams, Penn State, Notre Dame, Alabama, all victorious, and Texas A&M in a struggle against southwestern Louisiana. The Rage and Cajuns are really doing just that tonight. All that and more coming up after this timeout. Welcome back to our ESPN2 College Football Studio. Time to catch up on all the day's sports scores and highlights. All right, thank you very much for joining us on this busy college football Saturday. You know, all week long, Michigan coach Lloyd Carr refused to talk about the catch of 1994 that shocked the college football world. Well, today in Boulder, Colorado, he almost had to relive it. Michigan was down 10-3 in the second quarter. That's when Clarence Williams got going. Watch him take it in from eight yards out. That put Michigan and Colorado tied at 10. Look at it again. Clarence Williams fumbled before he crossed the goal line. Nevertheless, it still counted. Next Colorado possession, Coy Detmer going up top to Ray Carruth. He of 4-2 speed, 52 yards down to the Wolverine 27. Seven plays later, watch Detmer here. He'll find Phil Savoy in the corner for a six-yard score. Colorado led 13-10 at the half. Now, third quarter, game tied at 13. Key third down. Scott Dreisbach hits tie streets. He makes the juggling grab for a first down. That set up Dreisbach finding a wide open. Jerome Tooman. It was 21-13 Michigan. Fourth quarter now. Colorado down driving at the seven-yard line. Watch Coy Detmer here. He hits a wide, wide open. James Kidd down the right sideline, 45 yards and all. But guess what? This one was called back, folks. A legal procedure against the Buffaloes. Later in the drive, fourth and two, Rick Neuheisel had to get some good things going. T Detmer looking here for Phil Zavoy. He can't hang on the ball low. They had one final chance to win it. And here it comes. Five seconds left on the clock. Could it be a repeat of 1994, deja vu all over again? It is tipped by the Michigan defenders. Savoy almost had a chance to get it, but it falls incomplete. And Michigan, number 11 coming in, is victorious, 20 to 13 for Colorado, their first non-conference loss since they were beaten by the Miami Hurricanes in 1993. Elsewhere in college football, number 21, Iowa, 38-13 winner over Iowa State. Tavian Banks, 182 yards for the Hawkeyes. Heisman Trophy candidate Troy Davis had 152 yards and a touchdown. South Bend, Indiana, Lou Holtz broke Notre Dame's Newt Rockney's record for most games coach. And the Irish got things started right from the opening kickoff when Alan Rawson takes the kick. Bursts up the middle, and folks, he is gone. 99 yards in all, the fourth longest touchdown off a kickoff return in Notre Dame history. The Irish tack on more. Watch Autry Denson here. Great moves on this 12-yard touchdown run. That put the Irish up 14-zip. 35-0 in the fourth quarter, and Jarius Jackson now in for Ron Paulus. He runs for a first down on the keeper and then fumbles the football. A no-no after what the Irish did against Vanderbilt 10 days ago. Lou Holtz, he goes after Jarius Jackson. 
but it was just a pain, playful choke. Notre Dame wins it 35-0 over Purdue. Audrey Denson, three touchdowns today as the Irish held Purdue to just 44 yards rushing. Number six, Penn State, a big winner, 49-0 over Northern Illinois, despite the sparse play of Curtis Enos, who was out most of the game with a strep throat. Joe Juravicious, the wide receiver, 104 yards and two touchdown receptions. At Cajun Field, southwestern Louisiana giving Texas A&M all they could handle. Charles Johnson will pick it up for the Rage and Cajuns and run 17 yards for a 14-7 southwestern Louisiana lead. But back come the Aggies here. Brandon Stewart, the Tennessee transfer, breaks loose, cuts back against the grain. Watch him break a couple of tackles and finally burst the plane of the goal line. That touchdown counted. Texas A&M now has taken the lead 22-21 on a 48-yard field goal by Kyle Bryan. BYU Washington, this a mild upset out in Seattle as the Washington Huskies beat by number 14 BYU 29-17. Two touchdowns for Rashawn Sheehy, 131 yards of rushing offense. Georgia, South Carolina, the game you're seeing on ESPN, 53 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Carolina, surprisingly, leading the Bulldogs 23-14. Jim Donnan, the new coach of Georgia, in danger of losing his second consecutive game. Well, coming up, the USC Trojans open up their defense of their Pac-10 title. Highlights from the Coliseum. Fight on. This here freight train, he Pablo, me, I'm Mojito. There's only one drink fat enough to quench our thirst, and that's Turbo Sweet. Jeff, God damn you, the can's upside down. Uh, don't talk to me like a child. I I played Hamlet at Cambridge! Once again, you've ruined my concentration. Excuse me, excuse me. What's, what's my motivation? Your eyes, when you're thirsty, you're trust your gut. Come on. ...and two college football scores and go out to the West Coast now. Southern Cal taking on Oregon State in a Pac-10 opener for both teams. And Southern Cal just too much for the hapless Beavers. This is what happened early on. Watch Brad Otten, the quarterback for USC, pitch it out to Laval Woods. And guess what? He's going to go 96 yards for a touchdown, the longest in USC history. Longer than Simpson, longer than Marcus Allen, longer than Charles White. A great one run as USC goes on to win it. 46-17, USC rolls up 621 yards of total offense. Elsewhere, Arizona State has gotten two touchdown receptions from Keith Poole. They lead North Texas 14-0. Bandy in Alabama, a game you saw earlier here on ESPN2 and a wild one in Tuscaloosa. This is the kind of night it was. Third quarter, Damian Allen picked off by Kevin Jackson. He'll take it in 43 yards to the score. Alabama went up at that point 29-18, and they go on to win it by 10, 36-26. Alabama's 35th win in the last 37 tries against Bandy. Auburn, a big winner today over Mississippi, 45-28. Damian Craig had three touchdown passes. Maryland against number 22, Virginia. Tiki Barber gets 123 yards and two touchdowns as the Cavs win 21-3. Northwestern comes back after that devastating loss a week ago to Wake Forest. Dennis Darnell Autry with a big day, 157 yards, two touchdowns in a 38-13 win. And number 17, Kansas State, 35-0 winner over Cincinnati. Virginia Tech all over Boston College, a team that handed them their only Big, S big East conference loss a year ago. Well, in a moment, we'll be going back out to Boulder. Deja vu all over again, Michigan and Colorado. Chris Kirk and the coach with some final analysis. Straight. If you Three repeat itself. Well, in the case of Michigan versus Colorado in college football, the answer is almost. Chris, Kirk, and the coach have post-game analysis from Boulder. Mike, thank you. This is plan A. This is the weather outside in Boulder. A big thunder and lightning storm right after the conclusion of the football game. So we're inside in the war room here, which has been significantly dressed up, but still ready to talk some football. Well, uh, first of all, Dreisbach said it was his fault at the end of the game, the poor clock management that allowed Colorado to have that crack at the 38-yard line. And again, the ball tipped incredibly, but uh, Caruth not able to come down with it. After the game, the big defensive tackle for the Wolverines, William Carr, spoke with Steve Cyphers about that Wolverine gut check in the third quarter. Well, it seemed the difference came in the third quarter. What was different about that quarter in stopping their offense? Uh, the difference in that quarter was stopping the run. 
and uh, we got out the uh, Devin a little bit more in the third quarter, and we kind of sent the message that, hey, I mean, we for real, I mean, the first half wasn't a fluke, and that was the most important thing. We had to come out the second half and do the same thing we did the first half. We was down three, but we believed in ourselves that we could do it, and it uh, came true. What got to him today? Was it his scheme? Was it just effort? I think more, most of all, it was 11 guys out there playing the best football that they could ever play. And there's a front floor. I mean, we got out there, and we tried our hardest, man. <laughs> but I'm just so happy, man. <laughs> Oh, man, I was just so happy, bro. Last, last thing, Will, was there any chance that last pass was going to be completed? Oh, man. I, I don't know. <laughs> I hoped it. <laughs> I wished and prayed it. I looked in the ball like it was in the air forever, and they tipped it, and I saw a guy coming from the corner, and I was like, oh, my God. But then I knew that if they did score, they either was going to go for the victory, and we had overtime, or they was going to go for two, and we still had a chance to win. So it wasn't like the, the, the 94 game in, a, in the same sense. William Carr was a stud. That Michigan defense, yeah. he mentioned it, with the front four. A lot of twists. They got pressure on Detmer, never made him comfortable, but he was also killed by penalties. Well, listen, Colorado beat themselves. No question about it. They had 14 penalties. They lacked focus. The poor execution. Now, I've seen Rick Neuheisel coach three times at Colorado, two times extremely impressed with his football team. This time, I didn't think the performance was good. In fact, I recommend to Rick Instead of this off week and putting in new trick plays, go to Texas A&M two weeks from now, fundamentally sound. they got to get fundamentally sound. they got too much talent to lose that game. Coach, like we that. yeah, we talked about that this morning. The fundamentals of both teams would be important in this game. This game was vintage Michigan. Michigan did a great job disguising coverages, showing different looks to Colorado, but trying to confuse quarterback Coy Detmer. And as the game wore on in the second half, that's when they took control. I've seen it a thousand times being from Ohio State. I know all about it when Michigan, this is a typical Michigan game plan. They lull you to sleep, and they win it at the end. No yards after the catch for Colorado's talented receivers. And a terrific job calling plays for that Michigan sideline. They kept Colorado's defense all off balance all afternoon long. The Wolverines go home. You saw from Carr, it was an emotional win. The ghosts are exercised from two years ago. We'll have a lot more from here later on. Back down to Mike. And an emotional day in Major League Baseball. Pencil. Say that's certainly the case. They have been running up and down the field. They've had their way with the TCU defense. And it's really been a case of dueling tailbacks early on in the game, pretty much anyway. Well, it started with June Henley. He was the guy that got Kansas on the board. Great block blocked by Eric Galbraith. Henley gets into the end zone. And then John Williams for TCU came back to show you a little talent of his own. He breaks a long run here, which is... Well, a tremendous run. You'll see great speed here, pretty much on his own there. Gets him to the end zone to make the score 7-7. Seven to seven. And then it became really the June Henley show after this. Henley just made long run after long run on his way to a three-touchdown performance in the first half, which took us to a 28-10 halftime lead for Kansas. 23 carries, 146 yards, three touchdowns. And if he hasn't worked enough, he's standing deep awaiting the kickoff to begin the second half. Michael Reeder of TCU to kick it off from his own 35-yard line. The heavy rain that was pelting us in the second quarter has fairly well subsided now. And the wind is pretty much still. Second half underway. And Reeder again pounds it out of the end zone. Kansas will take over first and ten. Kansas has had the better of the statistical margin. They've had the ball more than seven minutes, more than TCU. They've outrushed them, outpassed them, and that's why they're winning 28-17. And Pat Henderson is the defensive coordinator for TCU, and we asked him yesterday in our meeting with him what happens if you can't stop Kansas in the run. There was no plan B. <laughs> First play of the second half brings flag. Well, it's a good thing that Pat Henderson isn't up in the uh, the press box watching this, this game. He probably would have wanted to jump by now. <laughs> Dead ball, false start, offense, still first down. Referee Lloyd Dale was busy in the first quarter with plenty of penalties, and then we we're pretty much penalty free in the second, and Pat Sullivan. Boy, his team has got some work to do, trailing by 18. This is a very important game for them. Sullivan made no bones about that. But now his team is down by 18. First play, second half. Incomplete. 
intended for Eric Van. So Van is in there to spell Henley every now and then and get him some work because they're going to need two backs as they get through their conference because, you know, they've got to play Colorado and Nebraska back to back. And if you think that June Henley can carry the ball 40 times and take a beating against one of those teams and then come back the next week and do it, I, I'm sorry, that's not quite right. He's going to need some help. Second play of the second half. That's Henley. Spin move at the 10 to the 15-yard line. Cedric Allen made the tackle number 25. Kansas doesn't have an easy schedule at all. Three top 10 teams they face from October the 19th through the 16th of November. A loss of one yard, third down. They go to Nebraska on the 26th of October. Yeah, no piece of cake before that to get Colorado on the 19th. And we'll be at Kansas at Utah on the 28th of September. Rod Gilmore and me, Charlie Scott. 28-10, early third quarter. There's Henley to the 20. So it will be fourth down, and TCU's defense holds on the first series of play. Well, that's a good start for TCU. They might have picked up a little bit of help from Kansas because Kansas came out and threw the ball a couple times and didn't get anything out of it. So they were able to put them in a very, very deep position where they couldn't really run the ball after that. The punter is Dean Royal. Give you some idea of how successful the Kansas offensive attack has been tonight. This is only his second punt. Jason Tucker awaiting the punt back at his own 35-yard line. Oh, bad kick. Real bad. Shanked it out of bounds at the 32. The punt traveled 13 yards. And this is a big break. See if TCU can capitalize. Well, that is the equivalent of a turnover. I mean, when you have a problem like that, you give Jeff Dover a chance to get on the field, already in position to at least get three points out of it with their great kicker. And now, if you're Pat Sullivan, you want the whole enchilada. You want to get seven points out of this and turn the momentum your way. So here's the first play of the second half for Pat Sullivan's Horn Frogs at TCU at the Kansas 32. Pitch out to Mitchell. Doesn't get much. Maybe to the 30. Pick up a three, second, and seven. Ronnie Ward. Yeah, Ronnie Ward tackle. is a special linebacker. I mean, he came up there, took on the block, got right past it with great speed, used his hands, and got up in there and made the tackle. I, you know, when you find inside linebackers that can take on blockers and then get rid of them and make the play, they're special players. Ronnie Ward had to sit out all of last year with a bad shoulder. He was their leading tackler in 1994, and he's picking up where he left off this year. Here's Dover's pass. Sideline, it is incomplete. Oh, Tavares Moore had it in his hands, too. Yeah. You know, it's very difficult to throw this timing fade route. You got to get the right angle, and you got to put enough air under the ball so your receiver can run underneath it. And Dover does a great job. He puts it right where it has to be, and Moore doesn't come up with it. But you can't throw it any better than that. Jason Harris, number 23, was on the play defensively. TCU is two of six in third down opportunities tonight. It is third at a healthy eight. At the Kansas 30. Here's Dover to throw. Over the middle, and he's got his man, the tight end, Travis Wilson. And that's enough for a first down to the 20 yard line. A pickup of 11. So Dover got great protection that time. And then he did something else. He showed you his poise. He scanned the field for three receivers before finally coming back to his tight end, Wilson, here. You'll see him just right there. He was waiting and waiting and waiting and finally came back to find Wilson to pick up the first down. Wilson did not have a catch last year, and this is his first catch this year. Travis Wilson with the first down. Little timing pattern incomplete intended for Jason Tucker down the sideline. The pass badly underthrown. Yeah, that was a, a very poorly thrown ball. Now, we showed you just a couple of plays ago how to do it correctly, and Dover did it perfectly. And this time he comes back and makes just a terrible throw. Second down and 10. At 
at the 20 yard line. Jeff Dover. It's been a long night so far. John Williams to the 16, a pickup of four, third and six. Dewey Houston, the 270 pound defensive tackle from Cahokia, Illinois, made the play. You know, Charlie, TCU has not run a screen pass since the first quarter when they had that pass kicked off. But that's one of their staples. I mean, they really have to use that play. And now it might not be a bad time to go back to it since they've been away from it for so long. Basil Mitchell last week against Oklahoma scored on a 54-yard screen pass play. Flag on the play. This is Mitchell. He'll score if the play stands up. I think Kansas may have been offside. Well, Charlie, that was the screen pass that we were talking about. They just came right back with it after staying away from it for so long. Kansas forgot about it, and it was the perfect situation to call it. Pat Sullivan did it, and they got the 16-yard touchdown out of it. And for Basil Mitchell, his second touchdown of the season. 28-16, and here's Michael Reeder, who's never missed an extra point in his college career. And he still has it. Basil Mitchell, 16-yard touchdown run. As the TCU Horn Frogs right back in it. 28-17, Kansas. How to speak Australian. Minute 8.30, number 23, Syracuse looks to redeem itself against Minnesota. A nice threefer on the deuce next Saturday. With the ball, first and 10 at their own 36. Johnner's pass long and complete. At the 35-yard line to the tight end, Jim Moore, Chris Staten made the tackle. Well, it was a great fake by Johnner back early on. That was fantastic. He was able to really hold his guy off. Oh, look at the fake right there. That worked for him, and now he has his choice. He's got Bird down the sideline, and he's got Moore crossing over. He could have picked either one of them. He went with Moore to pick it up. Moore with his first catch of the season. First and 10 at the 34. Here's Henley juking. Probably enough for a first down inside the 25. Mike Adamley. Charlie and Ron, an exciting finish at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. 18 seconds left. The Golden Gophers trailing Ball State 23-19. Corey Sauter, eight yards to the member of our all-name team, 2-2 Atwell. The Golden Gophers win it. They play next Saturday night, as you mentioned, against Syracuse. Guys? We'll see that one next Saturday night. Wow. Minnesota. And last play of the game. First and 10 here at the 24-yard line of TCU. And here's Henley. Bounces off a would-be tackler. And then finally slips between two more and picks up a couple of yards, second and eight. And Matt Harper makes a great play once again. Henley wanted to get outside, but Harper cut that off. And then Harper came down and chased him down the line of scrimmage and made the tackle. Well, you know, he's a guy that's about 265. And when you can make a play like that out there, stuffing your guy and then chasing down a guy who's this quick. Watch him. There he is. He's outside, forces Henley back inside, and now he's going to make the tackle. Gets a little bit of help from his other guys. That's a tremendous play. I'll tell you what, Chance McCarty has missed a lot of tackles tonight. The pass is tipped by number 91, Matt Harper. Harper has been playing a well of a game. Well, he was the defensive player of the game last week in the WAC conference for his performance against Oklahoma. And you just saw him on the last play. Now he comes over here. What's he do? Gets his hands up to knock the ball down. He didn't have a chance to sack the quarterback. Another great play by Matt Harper. Matt Harper, a transfer from Stanford. That was last week against Oklahoma. And he just broke up a pass here. Third down. And a long seven at the 
the 21 of TCU. That is Moore in motion. On the run. Pass is complete to Moore, but he's short of the first down at about the 17-yard line. Jeff Stevens made the tackle. Number seven, the outside linebacker. And right now, the Kansas offensive line is trying to talk Mason into going for this. They don't want to kick the field goal. They want to try and pick up the first down. And Mason, I'm not sure he's made up his mind yet. It's fourth and three. It's a healthy, it's a healthy way to go. So he's going to go he's gonna for the it. field goal. Jeff McCord with Johnner the holder. Pretty severe angle from 34 yards. And that is good. So Kansas is able to extend its lead to 14. It's 31-17, 9.15 to go, third quarter. Hey, having a little trouble packing on pounds, sports, or to even be noticed? You could crack here at the moment, and Pat Sullivan. For Sullivan, he made no bones about the fact that this was a very important game for his program. TCU has not been among the top 25 since 1990. And he figured that if he could beat Kansas tonight, number 24 Kansas, he could get his team right into the top 25. But he's still got a long way to go, trailing by 14. Well, I think he's right. If he gets a win, he'll be put into the top 25. But they got to stop that tough sweep from Kansas. They can't do that and hope. June Henley a little bit. They're not going to have a chance to catch this squad. Jeff McCord's got it teed up at the 35. Reggie Hunt. Nearly found himself a lane. Brought down at the 27-yard line. Next Thursday, tune in at 7.30 Eastern Time for the weekend kickoff show. Catch all the insights and predictions from these guys. Then at 8, it's an ACC battle as Warwick Dunn and the number three Seminoles head to North Carolina State, our Thursday night college football fair. Here at Amon Carter Stadium in Fort Worth, Texas, the rain is still coming down, but not nearly as hard as the latter stages of the first half. We are playing on natural grass. It's 31-17, and TCU's got the ball first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Dover is in trouble. Still in trouble. And Dover makes something out of nothing and picks up five yards. Mike Adamley. Charlie, you talked about TCU possibly jumping into the top 25. How about a team that may fall out of the top 25 for the first time in 80 consecutive weeks? The Raging Cages of southwestern Louisiana have taken the lead on Texas A&M after that interception return by Britt Jackson. It's 29-22. And time is running out on the Aggies. Wow. Still plenty of time here for the Horn Frogs. Second down and four yards to go at their own 32. Basil Mitchell is the single setback. Mitchell finds a hole across the 40 to the 41-yard line. The safety Jason Harris made the tackle, but not before Mitchell picked up nine. When you talk about TCU and their offense, look at uh, last week. They were plus two in the turnover category. Tonight, they've given the ball away, and that's really hurt them. When they take care of the football, they've got a chance, as they showed you last week against Oklahoma. But tonight, they're down by 14, and they've had three turnovers. Last week against Oklahoma, a dozen first downs here. They've got 10. Dover throwing long. He's open. Tucker's got it. At the 15-yard line. They'll mark it at the 17. They beat Jason Harris that time. Tucker, who burned Kansas last year for 160 yards, runs a great post pattern here against man coverage. And Harris is a good corner. Watch how he lulls him, and then he just takes off. Now, Dover simply has to put it out there for him to run under, and he does exactly that. Tucker right. does a nice job of making sure he gets the ball. His team is in position now to get right back in this thing. And remember, Tucker was not the number one receiver as this, this season got underway. John Washington was, and Washington's got a hamstring. So Tucker is doing all the work at wideout. 
And on that play, John Williams loses about three. Yeah, Jason Thorne was over there. Thorne came from his inside linebacking spot to run down Williams. You know, and that tandem of Warner and Thorne is probably as good as any tandem in college football today. I mean, those inside linebackers are tough, and they have great speed. They talk about their linebackers up at Wisconsin, Tarek Sala and Pete Monty. But I tell you what, Ward and Thorne are really doing a great job here tonight. 31-17. Kansas with the lead. TCU second in a long way. Screen pass. Mitchell steps out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Well short of the first down. Let's take a look at this play here from a little different angle here. You'll see what it's like to be a defensive player when you've got a screen play coming right at you and a big lineman in the back want to come your way. You see Mitchell do a nice job of avoiding one guy to try to get a little more yardage, but hey, that's a tough play to make if you're a corner out there and you got to take on those guys. There's a big play coming up for TCU, trailing by 14, third and nine. For the end zone. Incomplete intended for Jason Tucker. They're going for the field goal, and when you have somebody as steady as Michael Reeder, who has never missed a field goal from less than 39 yards in his college career, he is now a junior. It's nearly an automatic three. Well, it really does take a lot of decision making out of the coach's hand. You know, when you've got a guy who can just boot it like that, you don't have to contemplate, well, what do I call him third down? Do I have to get him in position? You know, can I take a shot at the end zone? Well, yeah, you can. If you miss it, this guy's going to come in and nail a three-pointer for you. A 33-yard field goal attempt. Should be money in the bank. No good. Well, Michael Reeder, for the first time in his college football career, misses a field goal from less than 39 yards. He's human. Apparently. I wouldn't have believed it before seeing that. I'm not sure he would have either. Snap was good. Yeah, he, it wasn't. Yeah, he knew it right away. It's a good snap, and everyone knew right away he missed, and everyone is just stunned because this kid doesn't miss gimme. This kid is so good, you can alter an offensive game plan around him. Well, sure, you saw an example of that on that last drive. I mean, they go ahead and they take a shot into the end zone when the ball's in the left hash mark because they know he's pretty much automatic. So it's first and ten for Kansas. Here's June Henley. Can't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Chance McCarty makes the tackle. Look at Reader. Yeah, he, he's stunned. He can't believe it. He can't believe that this happened. Let's take another look at the field goal that he just missed and watch the hold here. The laces are spun just uh, leans a little bit away with spinning the laces. He got the laces out of the way, which is what you always want. And so I'm sure he believes he should have had that one. Troy Stanford is the backup quarterback and also the holder. It's Todd Stanford. Yeah. Long pass. Nearly caught at the 40-yard line by Andre Carter. And that is one that John would like to have a lot a back once more because he had Carter out there. And you'll see he's going to do a nice job of getting by Masters. He turns Masters around and then turns on the Jets. And the ball is a little bit out of his reach there. Andre Carter making Corey Masters do a pirouette. And so now it's third down and 11 for Kansas at their own 19-yard line. Two flankers to the left, two more at the bottom of the screen. Watch out! Reggie Hunt. Untouched by human hands. 
Well, give credit to Pat Henderson, the defensive coordinator. They haven't run a corner blitz, safety blitz from the outside all night long. They saved it for this situation. And you see Henley inside, number 20. He's checking for blitz, but he doesn't check outside. Doesn't check outside, and there comes the blitz from the outside to make the play. Defensive coordinator Pat Henderson has to be pleased with the second series of plays. Sure, great job by Hunt. That's the third punt of the night coming up to Gene Royal, and he's averaged only slightly more than 25 yards in his first two attempts. This is no thing of beauty. Fielded by Tucker and fumbled. Kansas says it's got the ball. Kansas does have the ball. That's why a lot of coaches tell you, just secure the ball. Get the ball back first because you're going to get possession. Don't worry about a big play. Get the ball back. Well, TCU didn't do it that time. They turned it right back over, and this really will hurt them. Tucker was the man with the surest hands on the offense. Tucker doesn't come up with it. I don't think he was bothered by the rain. It's not that heavy right now, but he just lost that ball. Sean McDermott, the backup tight end, was the one who did come up with the ball, and now TCU has turned it over four times. And yet they're still in the game. But Kansas can break it open at any moment. There's June Henley off left tackle for about five yards. But well, Charlie, this is a really difficult time for the TCU defense. Emotionally, they just got a big stop. They were ready to go to the sideline. Now they've got to come back out and get another stop to help their offense. So this is called a sudden change, and defensively, you have to be mentally tough, and there's nobody tougher than 51 pass. You were looking at Pat Henderson, the uh, defensive coordinator for TCU. He played his college football at Kansas. His third year at TCU. Flag on the play. It looked like TCU jumped, but it may not matter. There's another flag on the play as Henley is run out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Two flags on the play. Well, let's play guessing game here. I think the first one is going to be offside mm -hmm. on TCU, and I think the second one is going to be a face mask down there at the end. Lloyd Dale, the referee, in the white hat. Well, see, when you see the players standing around down where the ball is, they aren't usually coming back with the penalty. Oops. <laughs> Holding, <laughs> offense, penalties offset, replay the down. Wow. Wow. Well, that's three on the defensive line. <laughs> Jump <laughs> cadence. Glenn Mason wants to know what was the hold all about. So it's a Long foul ball. Second down and five. Kansas set their own 47-yard line. And it worked out well for TCU. Boy, did it ever. Caught a break. And second and five. Gunner throwing. Mm. Way off the mark intended for Andre Curtis. Oh, and he's lucky he was way off the mark. He had no business throwing that football that time, Charlie. He had two TCU defenders sitting out there waiting for him. And he threw that ball out there. Had he put it on the money, he would have picked off. Take a look right there. Two defenders. Don't throw that ball. There's no sense to throw that ball in that direction on that play. Cam Hunt. Outside linebacker was actually the closest one to that pass. On third and five at the 48, Pat Henderson's defensive squad needs to come up big if his team's going to stay in the game. Here's Johnner. He's going to run. He's going to make a first down. Diving across the 45 to the 43. Got tapped at the oh, by the way, tackle. And, Charlie, that really hurts you mentally from a defensive standpoint. You had to stop the last drive. You have them in third and long. You play good defense. And then the quarterback takes off down the middle to pick up the first down. What do you have to do to get off the field right now? That's what those players are thinking right now for TCU. Henderson, in his third year as a defensive coordinator in this rebuilding Horn Frog program. 
First and ten at the 45. There's Henley. To the 37, Cedric Allen makes the tackle. Mike Adam Lee. Well, Charlie, the Raging Cajuns trying to hold on to win this thing. Texas A&M driving for a score and possibly a chance to win it. But Brandon Stewart flushed out of the pocket, and Damon Mason comes up with a juggling interception. It is all over down in Louisiana. The Raging Cajuns have won it, and they flood the swamp to the fans. 29-29, 29-22, the final over 25th-ranked Texas A&M. Wow. <laughs> I was right. The Aggies will drop out of the top 25 on Sunday morning. Or at Galbraith. Gains a couple. You know, you, you hear coaches talk about those cliches. You take them one at a time and all that kind of stuff. And when you just start to believe that it's hogwash, you see a game like that. And that's why it is a cliche. Take them one game at a time. Folks like that drive reporters crazy, but they're the ones that make the most sense. And that's what Glenn Mason was telling us yesterday. First and 10 at the TCU 31. The up back. Galbraith. Inside the 25 to about the 23. Chris Staten, strong safety, made the tackle. And now you're beginning to sense the wear and tear on the TCU defense. Yeah, we'll take a look at those numbers. Last year, 364 yards, five TDs, and tonight they're on pace to do that or more again. You know, and that has got to be so disheartening for that man right there, Pat Henderson, the defensive coordinator. The interior of his defensive line has just been beaten all night. Here's Henley again. He may go. He will go. His fourth touchdown of the night and 24 more yards. He's over 200. There's a flag down, but it appears to be against TCU. So the play will stand. The flag is back at the 34-yard line. But there is nobody moving back in that direction except the linesman who's picking up his hanky. TCU seem to be getting back into the game. Personal foul, number seven on the defense. It'll be enforced on the kickoff. Jeff Stevens, the linebacker, called for the personal foul. Pure frustration. And that defense was tired. They didn't want to be on the field. They felt they had done enough to get off the field. And Stevens, at the end, commits a personal foul out of frustration. And now Kansas looking to expand its lead to 21, which is precisely what they have just done. 38 to 17 with two minutes and seven seconds to go. Four touchdowns and 201 yards of rushing for this man, June Henley. for the right used vehicle. There's a about the agony of defeat. It was the foot of Michael Reeder. For the first time in his college football career, he missed a field goal from less than 39 yards. And then everything went south for TCU. As Kansas has expanded its lead to 38 to 17. When you think about what happened to TCU the last three or four minutes, they missed a field goal. And then they stop them on defense. They have a punt. They lose it. And it just really goes south. If you take a look at the replay, you'll see Reeder missed the field goal here. And that sort of starts the chain of events. That's followed up by a defensive stop. And then Tucker loses the punt. Kansas recovers. And they go on to march down the field and pick up a touchdown, which puts them up 38 to 17. Wow, what a change. So instead of TCU down by 14 and deep in Kansas territory, Kansas goes the other way. They lead by 21, and here's the kick. And tacking on the 15 yards for the unsportsmanlike, an easy kickoff well out of the end zone. June Henley already with a career-high four touchdowns tonight. His career high in rushing is 237 yards, and he is not far from that. As we mentioned, he came into tonight fourth in the country, and 
and he may move up the ladder, but keep in mind, as a senior in high school, that man ran for over 2,500 yards and averaged eight yards a carry. He's a player. 38-17, Kansas, 2.07 to go, first and 10, TCU at the 20. That is more in motion. And the handoff is to Basil Mitchell, and he gets maybe a yard or two. Yeah, Don Dercher did a great job that time. Dercher stepped up, took on his blocker, pushed him out of the way, and then made the tackle on Mitchell. I mean, when you get defensive linemen to make plays like that, it's like taking candy from a baby. It's too easy for everybody else. Dercher, who made the tackle, number 90. His dad played at Kansas and was a defensive tackle like father, like son. Second and nine. It's over. Fumble. Still loose. I think TCU has it. But Patrick Brown may have it. In fact, Patrick Brown does have it. And it's all coming undone for Patrick Sullivan. Well, you're exactly right. I mean, that ball was hanging out there, and there was just not the, the composure and the desire to just get on the ball and save your possession. And Kansas wanted that one a little bit more. Now, Dover's going to take a big hit here. Watch this hit from behind. He's going to lose the ball now. Now, TCU will have three or four opportunities to get the ball, and they don't come up with it. Kansas keeps scrambling to make the play. Look at the players around for TCU. They don't get on the ball. Kansas comes flying in there to pick it up. And so the redshirt freshman, Jeff Dover. It's been a long night for him. Four lost fumbles and one interception. Five turnovers. And TCU is in a world of hurt. Henley gets a couple of yards. Chance McCarty did a nice job that time of forcing Henley inside and then making the tackle. Now in the first half, Charlie, Kansas did a real good job of blocking McCarty and Harper on the end and getting outside to run their toss sweep. Well, in the second half, they've been better about holding firm on the outside, as you saw in that play when Chance McCarty made the tackle. So it's second down and 10 at the 17. And Henley remains a single setback. John has got a lot of time. Touchdown, Kansas. It's Isaac Bird. And it's 44-17. Well, that baseball player turned football player made a nice grab down there, ran a nice route. Here's a guy who was drafted out of high school by the Padres and drafted again in college by the Cardinals and signed with them, played over the summer. Does a nice job of turning around Godfrey White, number 10, to pick up the touchdown. The Jayhawk, who is a ball hawk, Isaac Bird, 21-year-old senior, and it's 45 to 17. 39 seconds to go, third quarter. Again in college by the Cardinals and signed with them, played over the summer. Does a nice job of turning around Godfrey White, number 10, to pick up the touchdown. The Jayhawk, who is a ball hawk, Isaac Bird, 21 year old senior. And it's 45 to 17. 39 seconds to go, third quarter. Pull the trigger. We dare you to spend. Well, the kickoff from Kansas to TCU is out of bounds, and the Horn Frogs will take over on the penalty. First and 10 at their own 35 yard line. 45 17, 39 seconds to go in the third quarter. It's been a long night. For the Heisman Trophy winning quarterback from 1971, Pat Sullivan, now in his fifth year. 
here at TCU. Well, it's pretty bad when you're being beaten by a score like that and it's raining. It doesn't get a whole lot worse. The rain makes you feel colder and more heavy and tired. You just want to go home and go to bed. Five turnovers will kill you every time. Dover remains the quarterback. Dover's going to throw. And he's got Jason Tucker at the 50-yard line. That's a complete to Jason Tucker. Oh, the red shirt freshman has a solid throwing arm. Well, it's very important for him to continue to play the game. Play the game as if it's a close game and not worry about it. He has to mature as a quarterback, and he's got to work through adversity. So it's important that he run the offense efficiently and bring his team back, regardless of whether they win the ball game. He's got to show that he can bring them back. There are five Williams on the TCU roster, two of them in the backfield, and this is John. And he runs out of bounds after gaining just a couple to about the 48 of Kansas. Well, one thing that Kansas did by getting up as much as they did in the third quarter, they kind of took John Williams out of the game. Glenn Mason was able to get a lead, so John Williams could not run the ball as much for TCU as he did in the first half in that 50-plus yard touchdown run he had. Second down and eight at the 48. Patrick Bateau flying way out to the left side out of your picture at the moment. Here's the handoff, and Williams is stopped at the line of script. No, he isn't either. Williams to the 39-yard line. There is a flag on the play, however. And they threw it right in the middle of the field where you usually find a holding at the line of scrimmage. And that's what they found. So Ryan Tucker, number 50, the center for TCU, just dominated his man. It looked almost like a takedown. I thought it was a great block from our vantage point, but then we're 42 flights up. <laughs> <laughs> we're not kidding. 42 <laughs> stories up. Holding, number 50 on the offense. 10 yards penalty, still second down. Yeah, watch how he smothers his man. Ryan Tucker has been a man in the middle of a controversial storm here in Fort Worth. He and four or three others, four members of the TCU team were arrested and indicted for an off-campus outside of a bar incident back in July. We'll continue the story after the flood. And we'll continue the story, in fact, at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Kansas leading 45-17. What's good? It all became undone for the TCU Horn Frogs in the second and third quarters. And Henley was the man who really stuck the dagger in their heart. 31 carries, 201 yards, and four touchdowns. And here's Dover throwing long. And it's picked off. That is the sixth turnover of the night. Think that was Jason Harris, and it was. We were going to tell you the story about Ryan Tucker, the offensive center who has played so well for TCU. He's been one of the few shining lights tonight, but he is in the middle of a major controversy here. He and three other Horn Frogs were involved in an incident outside a bar in July in which a fellow TCU student was kicked and hospitalized and suffered brain damage. He was arrested and indicted, and a lot of people seem to think, should he play or should he not? And TCU found themselves, Rodney, in a difficult position. Well, TCU has not taken any, any action, but they are really, quite honestly, um, Charlie, between a rock and a hard place. If they take some action, they may prejudice the rights of the defendants, including Tucker, in the civil and criminal criminal uh, cases pending. And if they don't do anything, which they haven't, it gives the appearance that there is some preferential room for treatment for players. And Pat Sullivan is, has come under a lot of heat for this, and maybe unjustifiably. And he has been instructed by the university, pending the investigation by the legal authorities, not to say anything. And so Tucker continues to play. There's a new quarterback in the lineup for Kansas, it's Ben Root. And he has handed it off to Eric Van. Roots is a senior coming off knee surgery, torn anterior cruciate ligament. 
on the left knee back on the 13th of April. He tore the right anterior cruciate ligament back in 1992. He is a senior and he wants to get into our business. Yeah, well, doesn't take good knees for that. <laughs> good, good eyes. Sometimes they deceive you. Roots handing it off. Flag on the play. And suddenly, out of the pack. That looks number like 25, Van. Van. Yeah, yeah, that play looked dead. I think the official thought the play was dead. And Van just kept going. But he, the official threw his flag. He was looking in the air and holding. Yep, he's got it again. Bring it to back. Yeah, you were talking about Roots. One of the things about him is that I, everyone sort of expected him to kind of come in and be the quarterback this year. But because he was hurt, he wasn't able to get the rep. And that opened the door for Jono. Holding. 76 offense. 10-yard penalty. Replay first down. Jono has that Andre Agassi look, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Just needs to grow a little facial hair, huh? 13 to 25, 132 yards and a touch. But those turnovers, six of them, have just kill TCU. Well, you know, you just can't win in college football like that or professional football. Last year, Northwestern was plus 22 in turnovers, and that's why they were so good. Minus six tonight. Here's Roots. Better get rid of it. And he slips and falls on the soggy turf. It's been raining fairly steadily since the second quarter. Matt Harper and Michael Yannick made the tackle. You know, Roots transferred to the Kansas program from Nebraska a few years ago. Wanted to come here and get his chance. Had Tommy Frazier and some other quarterbacks ahead of him at Nebraska and had lost some mobility with uh, the knee injury. Came over here and thought this would be his year. And right now he is the backup. He came over here and injured the other knee. Galbraith and Van with roots from the shotgun on second and 23. Coming into tonight's ball game, Charlie, the WAC conference had done so well out of conference with their top three or four teams. They were really doing well. But they've run into a steamroller tonight, at least the representative in the form of TCU against Kansas. And so on third down and 20 for Kansas at their own 20 yard line. The clock is running. 12 minutes and change left in the game. Roots from the shotgun. Rolling, he's in trouble, still standing, now he's down. Back at the eight yard line, Michael Yannick, 95, made the play. Uh, Roots was under a lot of pressure that time, but you know, sometimes as a quarterback, Charlie, you just throw the ball away. You're not gonna make anything happen, just get rid of it and let your punter come on. There's no sense in getting yourself banged up or possibly throwing a pick. And Dean Royal is in the end zone. Three punts tonight, averaging a mediocre, less than mediocre, 28.3 yards per kick. Jason Tucker is standing back at his own 40-yard line. His fumble on a punt in the third quarter pretty much did in the cross. The high spiral kick. And the fair catch at the 47 of Kansas. 45-17, the Jayhawks with 11-21 to go. Enter the Performance Zone. The presentation of college football is brought to you by Splitfire. Enter the Performance Zone with Splitfire Performance V Spark Plug. 45-17, the Jayhawks spoiling the season home opener for the TCU Horned Frogs who have the ball first and 10 at the Kansas 48 and a new quarterback. Fred Taylor. And his handoff to Basil Mitchell and be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Taylor is a 6'1", 190-pound junior from Jackson, Mississippi, a junior college transfer. And he is not the least bit bashful about running with the ball if he's got the opportunity. Well, we talked about him earlier and how everybody thought he was going to come in and be the starter, but Dover just simply outplayed him. Mitchell and Lance Williams are in the I formation. Fred Taylor on the option. He gets smashed 
46 by Patrick Brown. Third down at about nine. Those are friends of yours. You know, Those are somewhere, your their moms and dads are watching this game thinking, we got our money's worth. Yeah, good money. <laughs> That's not what they meant by the art class. <laughs> <laughs> they took some extra supply. <laughs> we started the night with 37,512. Then the rain came, and slowly but surely, the crowd has been evaporating. That in a 28-point deficit. Less than 10 minutes to go. Here's Taylor's first throw of the game. Good arm. And he completes it to Jason Tucker. Close to the first down. Maybe about a yard shy at the 39. Jamie Harris in on the play defensively. Maybe there's something in the air. A big night for Kansas. Miss Kansas. That is not her. Won the Miss America contest. And for those of you who've been watching the Miss America contest, thanks for joining yeah, us here. Welcome. Rock, Chalk, Jayhawk. <laughs> Finally got that in, didn't Oh, I love that. Fourth and one for the TCU Horn Frogs, and Kansas is going to call a timeout. 9.52 to go. And Be sure and tune in to TCU Pat Sullivan. Pat Sullivan you can only wonder what might have been. TCU at the Kansas 39-yard line, trailing by 28, trying to make the score respectable. Taylor hands it off to Coy Woods, and I don't think he got it. Patrick Brown ended up being credited with the tackle. It's been that kind of night for TCU. Well, and they ran to their strength that time. They went behind their biggest and their best lineman, who is Ryan Tucker, and they got stuff. You don't have Ryan Tucker lose many battles, especially on short yardage, but he lost that one. So Glenn Mason is going to go home with a 2-0 record. And next week... Actually, in two weeks, they play at Utah. They have next week off. Roots hands off to Eric Van to about the 45. And, and you know, Glenn Mason has just got to love that. He gets next week off after having just been off for 16 days. So, what, you play three games in, what, about five weeks, six mm -hmm. weeks? That is no way to establish any kind of continuity. And so it's second down and four. Fox is mercifully running. Van is met by a half a dozen purple shirts. There have been two storylines tonight in the Kansas 28-point lead. June Henley is the big story. 31 carries, 201 yards, four touchdowns, a career high. And TCU has turned it over six times leading to three Kansas touchdowns. I thought you were going to say the two stories were Henley's left leg <laughs> and his right leg. <laughs> Man, he's been something oh. else. And we're going to see him in two weeks at Utah. Roots handing it off to Van. The receiver coach at Kansas is Vic Adamley. Needs a little work on his headset. Resembles one of our buddies, huh? Mike Adamley, our studio host. He looks and he strangely season. like his oh, brother. like huh? him a little bit, huh? I had a chance to chat with him earlier this week, and I said, hey, uh, you know, Mike said that you'd give me the game plan. He goes, game plan? I don't give Mike a game plan. Well, he disavowed any knowledge of Mike being a <laughs> member of the family. Eight minutes to go. <laughs> Clock is running. Four punts on the night. Dean Royal for just a shade over 30 yards to pop. That's a nice punt. Tucker nearly bobbled it at the 11. Mikey disavows any knowledge of you. <laughs> Charlie, I know that I can get can't get any information out of him. 
speaking of whack teams, you're talking about TCU. How about earlier today what happened to BYU in Washington? The star of the day, Washington Husky running back Rashawn Sheehy going to his left and then going the distance. 45 yards in all as the Huskies went on to beat number 14 BYU 29-17. Be kind to my brother, guys. <laughs> he swears it's not you, Mike. <laughs> it's been all Kansas tonight. Here's the handoff to John Williams, who had a splendid first half and has been stopped dead in his tracks in the second. Pick up the baby two or three. TCU has gone wacky this year. One of 16 teams in the Western Athletic Conference. Pat Sullivan is watching the clock count down. Here's Taylor. He's in trouble. Throwing on the run in it. That's nearly ooh, yeah. picked off. Almost picked off. Should have been picked off. Should have been picked off there by Mitch Bowles. After all those years in the Southwest Conference where TCU is getting beat up on a fairly regular basis, now they have gone wacky. And Hawaii yeah. is somewhere west yeah, of the what, Hudson. What is that down there? You got an arrow just pointing somewhere. We, we <laughs> know how far there. away that is. Been there, done that. <laughs> And Hawaii got crushed today, huh? Ooh, got a feel for Fred Von Oppen and his squad, a 66 to nothing loser to Wyoming. A lot of direct flights, I'm sure, from Honolulu to Wyoming. And Fred might jump off the plane. <laughs> he could be up here with us. <laughs> Third and seven at the 15. Here's Taylor handing it off. This is the wax schedule for TCU this year. Not exactly easy at Utah. BYU comes here. Well, you know, they were looking pretty good. They thought that if they got a win tonight, they could kind of roll a little bit until they got into the uh, latter part of October with Utah and BYU. And who knows, by then they could have been the top 20 team. Too many mistakes tonight. Isaac Bird is standing deep. As the barefooted putter, Royce Huffman. Gets a bad bounce on a so-so kick. Out of bounds at the TCU 41. Just 23 yards when all is said and done. And Pat Sullivan in the midst of rebuilding this program. You know, they hadn't won back-to-back -back seasons. Had seasons of playing records since 58 and 59. You know, take, so, go ahead, Charles. I was going to say, small steps, but he has turned this program into a respectable, still way to go. You know, when he first got here, his offensive line averaged 255 pounds. It's now 282. And his defensive line, when he got here, averaged just 238 pounds and now averages 264. And when he first got here, Sullivan had just 74 players on his team, including walk-on. Now he's got 119, and the caliber of play certainly is on the upswing here in Fort Worth. But still, much work to be done. Well, he's done a lot of good work, and we got a chance to see some of the facilities and the weight room that they used to bulk up some of those players. And you were in there yesterday pumping iron away, and, you know, they've been very generous and gracious. That Pat Sullivan has his squad going, they could wind up with another winning season and possibly in a bowl game. This is the third time in as many years that these two teams have faced one another. The handoff is to Van inside the 30, down to about the 27. That's enough for a first down. This is the third time in as many years these two teams have faced one another. Two years ago, TCU won and went to a bowl. Kansas City. Last year, Kansas beat TCU. Kansas, of course, went to the Aloha Bowl. And TCU sat and watched the postseason on television. Well, how about what Glenn Mason has going on over there at Kansas? You know, we watched Colorado and Michigan today, and Colorado will have their hands full when they play this Kansas team. It's an experienced team with a lot of fine runners, as Van shows you here. He's a tough guy, but June Henley is the main man for Kansas, so... That race with Colorado and Nebraska ought to be pretty good. Well, Nebraska and everybody else. Well, yeah, that's true. 
Man. But you can toss Kansas State in there with Colorado as, as the top four teams or so. And then yeah. when you get to the, the conference championship game, probably, uh, you know, Texas will be in there too. And of course, it was a most eventful trip to Hawaii for Glenn Mason last year. He really gave up the ghost and moved on to Georgia. And then he decided, you know, I'm just going to stay put. And he's now in his ninth season. And he's got a good looking football team this year. Here's Eric Van. And he just gets a couple of yards as the clock continues to run a 28 point lead. And this is the star of this football team, June Henley, who became the most prolific touchdown scorer in the history of Kansas football tonight, with four TDs and 32 in his career. He's already moved ahead of Gail Sayers and John Riggins as third now on the all-time rushing post board. You think he knows who Gail Sayers is? <laughs> I am sure they've told him. But he never saw him play. Somehow, I suspect somewhere around Kansas Sayers' picture is hanging proudly somewhere. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Yeah, but that guy is going to be maybe in the top two or three rushers in the NCAA after tonight's performance of 201 yards. I mean, he came in as number four and just had a spectacular night. And hasn't played the lick here in the fourth quarter. You know, if he continues to put up these kinds of numbers, his name will creep up in there. Kansas does well. It'll creep up into that Heisman race a little bit. It's been a long night for TCU. 7-7 after one, and that was about all she wrote. On fourth and five, Ben Roots throwing and completing all the way down to the five-yard line to Hosea Friday. A pickup of 19 and a first down. Fox stops momentarily as they move the chain. Nice sprint out route here. You get the tight end, Jose, uh, Hosea Friday, dragging across the middle. And watch the way Roots does a nice job of the fake, and he gets out there. He can run it if he wants to, but he's waiting for Friday to drag across so he can throw the ball to him. Good job. That route is almost always open for you. That was the 25th first down of the night for Kansas. By way of comparison, TCU has but 11. From the eye, down to the three-yard line. That was Van again. Van getting a lot of the work now that Henley is out of the game. Long night for the Horn Frog. That is Washington, the wide receiver who's had a hamstring problem and wasn't able to play much after early in the first uh, quarter. And they really need to get him back into the lineup. He is really their most talented, their quickest receiver, and their big play guy. But it gives Tucker all the more credit for doing it literally by himself as a wideout tonight. Flag on the play. With Kansas. Did it get in or no? Oh, got another flag anyway. Dead ball. Substitution infraction. Be a five-yard penalty. Still second down. Look like a pledge of allegiance <laughs> I <know>. infraction. <laughs> well, you know what happens. You, know, you get third and four stringers now who are getting into the ball game. Everybody wants to run on the field to get a shot to get on the field for a little bit. So Glenn Mason's going to have to say, now wait your turn. <laughs> <laughs> Just like last year, Kansas has owned the ground game. Last year, 364 yards and five TDs. Tonight, five TDs, 318 yards. They have dominated the ground. They have owned the clock, and they own the scoreboard. I don't think that was what uh, TCU had in mind when they said improving on their run defense. Second and goal at the seven. Here's Van at the five. And that is Matt Johnner, who's had a very solid night. As Kansas is about to go 2-0. He was 13 of 25, 132 yards, one touchdown pass. And played a very smart game. He had a couple of bad throws in there, but by and large, he was very efficient, very effective and probably solidified himself even more so as the number one quarterback on this Kansas squad. And Kansas has presented six presents tonight, six turnovers. And they took advantage of it and cashed in 21 points. 
Jonathan Macklin with the carry. Down to about the four-yard line. That will present a fourth and goal. What do you do? You don't want to rub it in, but... I wouldn't want the point here, but you can't tell guys not to run hard. I'd call a play where I didn't have much of a chance of getting it. I mean, I just didn't, I would not want to rub it in here. No. This game was decided about midway through the third quarter. And here's Van scoring. Well, well you can't 51, tell Van. 17. Yeah. You can't tell Van not to run hard, but you can do a quarterback sneak for throw the ball away, huh? KU will travel 444 miles home to Lawrence tonight. Happy and victorious. And making a state that they deserve to be higher than 24, which was the rank they brought with them into the game tonight. Well, with Texas A&M falling out of the top 25, the Jayhawks will move up a bit. Mm -hmm. Kansas tonight with six rushing touchdowns. Four of them from June Henley. Kansas calling timeout. <laughs> Glenn Mason doesn't exactly know why. <laughs> well, you can't control everything on the field as a coach. You can't control a guy's desire to get a touchdown in the waning minutes of the ball game when he hasn't scored this season yet. And Van just played hard. You want your players to play hard, but you don't want to embarrass the other side. So Glenn Mason, who said he didn't have a fix on his team coming into this game. And you believed it. <laughs> No, I just took him at his word. <laughs> now, he must have a pretty good idea. He's got a good football team. Well, when you come back with as many seniors and veteran players as he has on his team, you know you've got a special squad, and you have a chance to be pretty darn good. With a very special running back. And here's Jeff McCord making it 52-17 to 17 with a minute and three seconds to go. And we'll be back for the final Bucko 3 in just a minute. Let us remind you, next Saturday, 12.30 Eastern, Pitt goes to Ohio State. And then, in prime time, LSU and Auburn. Next Saturday, our doubleheader on ESPN, the original. Well, trailing by 35 points with a minute and three seconds to go, plenty of good seats still available. <laughs> So if you're in the neighborhood and want to catch final minute three, come on over. Not many cars in the parking lot either, for that matter. <laughs> From the I formation, first and ten. That was John Williams. First for a big touchdown in the first half and has been stymied here in the second. Well, TCU is in no hurry to get too many more plays in. I guess they won't be doing the Macarena tonight, huh? And neither will you. <laughs> One you can guarantee. <laughs> that man might. Jude Henley, boy, he's got a reason to celebrate. Oh, yeah. He can dance to his heart's content. I bet he's tired, but he's not so tired that he won't want to have some fun. So this should be the final play of this game as the Horn Frogs are about to be taken out of their misery. John Williams. Back to get out of bounds? No, he doesn't. So Kansas improves to 2 and 0. TCU drops to 1 and 1. Kansas has next week on TCU goes to New Mexico in 2 weeks. That is going to do it for us. Our final score 52 to 17. Ultimate fight is up next. For Rodney Gilmore, I'm Charlie Steiner saying goodbye from Fort Worth, Texas. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.